psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it's happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. Mind control in America. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Many of the things that people believe are never questioned, especially when the information has come from a reliable source. It becomes easy to lose sight of why people believe some of the things that they do. People can be led to believe something that is not true when that information is carefully timed and presented by an accepted and respected authority. The purpose of propaganda is to direct public attention to certain facts. The whole art consists in doing this so skillfully that everyone will be convinced that the fact is real, wrote Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf. To be effective, propaganda must constantly short-circuit all conscious thinking and operate on the individual subconsciously. The principles behind the big lie of propaganda are the same principles of mind control, hypnotic suggestion, mental programming, distraction, and repetition. Distraction focuses the attention of the conscious mind on one or more of the five senses in order to stop conscious thinking, thus producing a state of mind that is similar to daydreaming. Think of the times you have caught yourself staring blankly at the television screen, losing all sense of time and place. When you stop conscious thinking and your mind goes blank, this is the hypnotic state of mind. This altered state occurs naturally, but can also be induced by clever manipulation. Think of the times you have seen flashing words in TV commercials. The flashing words are a distraction for your eyes to lock onto in order to induce hypnosis. The purpose of this is to reduce any resistance to the message by stopping all thought and analysis. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses patterned speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors, trust in the source of the information and the repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true, even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes the conditioned response. 
Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. Subliminal perception is the process whereby you receive and respond to visual and sound information without being aware of it. The message in the form of printed words, pictures, or voices is presented either so rapidly or so faintly that you are not consciously aware of having seen or heard anything. In 1957, marketing researcher and psychologist James Vickery tested subliminal ads in a New Jersey movie theater. The messages... Hungry? Eat popcorn. And? Drink Coca-Cola. ...were flashed on the screen at one three thousandth of a second every five seconds during the movie. Sales increased for popcorn and Coca-Cola. Every major advertising agency in North America has sponsored extensive research into subliminal perception. Vance Packard's 1957 book, The Hidden Persuaders, revealed that American industry was researching the use of subliminal messages to motivate people to buy their products. Dr. Wilson Brian Key has documented in four books the widespread use of subliminal ads by the advertising industry. Messages programmed directly to the subconscious bypass critical analysis and the conscious choice to accept or reject the message. Repetition of the message constitutes mental programming. Subliminal messages have been used in music, radio, television, and movies. In November 1957, TV station WTWO in Bangor, Maine, experimented with projecting a subliminal message on television. In 1958, radio station KOL in Seattle broadcast subliminal messages under the music played by its distrockies. How about a cup of coffee? Was one, and another was... Someone's at the door. The movie, The Exorcist, used both subliminal sound and pictures. A full-screen death mask of Father Karras was flashed on the screen at 1.48 of a second a number of times during the movie. The consciously unnoticed word pig appeared many times throughout the movie. The terrified squealing of pigs being slaughtered and the buzzing sound of angry bees was mixed into the soundtrack. Laboratory experiments show that people will react to certain words, pictures, and sounds with quickened pulse, faster breathing, sweating palms, and other indications of heightened emotion. People actually fainted in response to this movie. Many became nauseous, and many had nightmares. William Peter Blatty, the author of the novel and the producer of the movie, was a CIA operative who served as the policy branch chief of the Psychological Warfare Division of the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. On October 30th, 1938, Thousands of people fled from a crisis that had no existence except in their imaginations. A radio broadcast of a dramatization of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds led thousands of listeners to believe that the planet Earth had been invaded by Martians. The 1983 TV movie Special Bulletin about terrorists exploding an atomic bomb in Charleston, South Carolina prompted numerous calls to stations across America from people who wanted to know if it was real. In both instances, despite disclaimers, people thought they were listening to an authentic newscast. Think for a moment about the way newscasters speak, and you will realize that they all talk the same way, regardless of their ethnic background. Whether they be black, white, Hispanic, or Oriental, with few exceptions, they all sound alike. The pattern speech of a newscaster is 